Henry Walter Bates, the 8th of February 1825 in Leicester, the 16th of February 1892 in London, was an English naturalist and explorer who gave the first scientific account of mimicry in animals. He was most famous for his expedition to the rainforests of the Amazon with Alfred Russel Wallace, starting in 1848. Wallace returned in 1852, but lost his collection on the return voyage when his ship caught fire. When Bates arrived home in 1859 after a full 11 years, he had sent back over 14,712 species mostly of insects of which 8,000 were according to Bates but see Van Wyhe new to science. Bates wrote up his findings in his best-known work, The Naturalist on the River Amazons. Topic. Life Bates was born in Leicester to a literate middle-class family. However, like Wallace, T.H. Huxley and Herbert Spencer, he had a normal education to the age of about 13 when he became apprenticed to a hosiery manufacturer. He joined the Mechanics Institute, which had a library, studied in his spare time and collected insects in Charnwood Forest. In 1843 he had a short paper on beetles published in the journal Zoologist. Bates became friends with Wallace when the latter took a teaching post in the Leicester Collegiate School. Wallace also became a keen entomologist, his first interest had been plants, and he read the same kind of books as Bates and as Darwin, Huxley and no doubt many others had. These included Thomas Robert Malthus on population, James Hutton and Charles Lyell on geology, Darwin's The Voyage of the Beagle, and above all, The Anonymous Vestiges of the Natural History of Creation by Robert Chambers, which put evolution into everyday discussion amongst literate folk. They also read William H. Edwards's voyage up the river Amazons on his Amazon expedition, and this started them thinking that a visit to the region would be exciting, and might launch their careers. The Great Adventure In 1847 Wallace and Bates discussed the idea of an expedition to the Amazon rainforest, the plan being to cover expenses by sending specimens back to London. There an agent would sell them for a commission. The often repeated statement that the main purpose was for the travelers to "...gather facts towards solving the problem of the origin of species." And that Wallace put this in a letter to Bates, is almost certainly a myth, originating in a convenient adjustment of history by Bates in The Naturalist on the River Amazons of 1863. The two friends, who were both by now experienced amateur entomologists, met in London to prepare themselves. They did this by viewing South American plants and animals in the main collections. Also they collected, wants lists, of the desires of museums and collectors. All known letters exchanged between Wallace and Bates are available in Wallace Letters Online. Bates and Wallace sailed from Liverpool in April 1848, arriving in Paror now Belem, at the end of May. For the first year they settled in a villa near the city, collecting birds and insects. After that they agreed to collect independently, Bates travelling to Kametar on the Tocantins River. He then moved up the Amazon, to Obidos, Manaus and finally to the upper Amazon Salimos. Tefe was his base camp for four and a half years. His health eventually deteriorated and he returned to Britain in 1859, after spending nearly 11 years on the Amazon. He sent his collection on three different ships to avoid the fate of his colleague Wallace, who lost his entire collection when his ship sank. Bates spent the next three years writing his account of the trip, The Naturalist on the River Amazons, widely regarded as one of the finest reports of natural history travels. <laughs> <laughs> Home at last In 1863 he married Sarah Ann Mason. From 1864 onwards, he worked as Assistant Secretary of the Royal Geographical Society effectively, he was the secretary, since the senior post was occupied by a noble figurehead. He sold his personal Lepidoptera collection to Frederick Duquesne Godman and Osbert Salvin and began to work mostly on beetles Cerambicids, Carabids, and Cicindelids. 
From 1868 to 1869 and in 1878 he was president of the Entomological Society of London. In 1871 he was elected a Fellow of the Linnean Society, and in 1881 he was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society. He died of bronchitis in 1892, in modern terms, that may mean emphysema. A large part of his collections are in the Natural History Museum see the field, London, 20 February 1892. Specimens he collected went to the Natural History Museum, at that time called the British Museum Natural History, and to private collectors, yet Bates still retained a huge reference collection and was often consulted on difficult identifications. This, and the disposal of the collection after his death, are mentioned in Edward Clodd's Memories. Wallace wrote an obituary of Bates in Nature. He describes Bates's 1861 paper on mimicry in Heliconiidae butterflies as remarkable and epoch making, with a clear and intelligible explanation, briefly addressing its attackers as persons who are more or less ignorant of the facts. He then praises Bates's contributions to entomology, before regretting, in remarkably bitter words for an official obituary, that the confinement and constant strain of mere drudgery of office work for the Royal Geographical Society had with little doubt weakened his constitution and shortened a valuable life. His work Henry Bates was one of a group of outstanding naturalist explorers who were supporters of the theory of evolution by natural selection Charles Darwin and Alfred Russell Wallace 1858. Other members of this group included J. D. Hooker, Fritz Muller, Richard Spruce and Thomas Henry Huxley. Bates' work on Amazonian butterflies led him to develop the first scientific account of mimicry, especially the kind of mimicry which bears his name, Batesian mimicry. This is the mimicry by a palatable species of an unpalatable or noxious species. A common example seen in temperate gardens is the hover fly, many of which, though bearing no sting, mimic the warning coloration of hymenoptera wasps and bees. Such mimicry does not need to be perfect to improve the survival of the palatable species. Bates noted of the heliconids long wings that they were forest dwellers which were 1. Abundant 2. Conspicuous and slow flying 3. Gregarious, and also 4. The adults frequented flowers 5. The larvae fed together, and yet, said Bates I never saw the flocks of slow-flying heliconidae in the woods persecuted by birds or dragonflies, nor when at rest did they appear to be molested by lizards, or predaceous flies of the family Acylidae robber flies, which were very often seen pouncing on butterflies of other families. In contrast, the pyridae sulfur butterflies, to which Leptalis belongs now called dysmorphia, are much persecuted. Bates observed that many heliconid species are accompanied by other species pyrids, which mimic them, and often cannot be distinguished from them in flight. They fly in the same parts of the forest as the model heliconid and often in company with them. Local races of the model are accompanied by corresponding races or species of the mimic. So a scarce, edible species takes on the appearance of an abundant, noxious species. Predators, Bates supposed, learn to avoid the noxious species, and a degree of protection covers the edible species, no doubt proportional to its degree of likeness to the model. These testable hypotheses about warning signals and mimicry helped to create the field of evolutionary ecology. Bates, Wallace, and Muller believed that Batesian and Mullerian mimicry provided evidence for the action of natural selection, a view which is now standard amongst biologists. Field and experimental work on these ideas continues to this day. The topic connects strongly to speciation, genetics, and development. E.G.A. Bates spent the best part of a year at E.G.A. now Tefe in the Upper Amazon, Salimos, where he reported that turtle was eaten regularly, and insect catchers were especially abundant. 
He found upwards of 7,000 species of insects in the area, including 550 distinct species of butterfly. Bates nursed a sick toucan back to health. Tocano, the Indian name, after its cries, proved to be an intelligent and amusing companion, with a voracious appetite. Mainly a fruit eater, he learnt the mealtimes, to a nicety, and would eat flesh and fish as well as fruit. Topic. Taxonomy Bates' original work was done on a group of conspicuous butterflies always spelled by Bates as Heliconidae. He divided this assemblage into two groups, the Danoid Heliconids, having affinities with the tribe Danaini see also Danaini, and the Acraeoid Heliconids related to the Acraeini. The former are now known as Athamini, closely related to the milkweed butterflies, and were named after the genus Danaeus in the Danaini. The latter are now known as the tribe Heliconini, or longwings, named after the genus Heliconius. Both group within the family Nymphalidae, and both groups tend to feed on poisonous plants. The milkweed plant supplies poisonous glycosides which render both caterpillar and adult danaines noxious. Athamines, in contrast gain their toxicity from their adult nectar sources. Heliconine caterpillars feed on poisonous passiflora vines. However, athamines gain their toxicity from their adult food plants. Topic. Legacy Henry Walter Bates is commemorated in the scientific name of a species of South American boa, Corallus Batesi and in the name of his theory of mimicry, Batesian mimicry. <laughs> Notes <laughs>